Hey guys, so I want to make a new video going over my multi mirror channel shot and the more budget options as well. But yeah, I'm very excited to bring this video because Tato Shot is in fact very good this patch. I want to go over why it's very good this patch and like everything about this skill. So first, real quick, we'll do a map showcase followed by an Uber boss, of course. But yeah, Tato Shot is a lot stronger in this patch. You know, in the Kropos League, it was heavily nerfed and it was pretty much like a dead skill. Then they, I guess, accidentally buffed it this patch and I'll go over why, but yeah. But as you can see, the clear is just as good as ever. It's still very, very good. You know, standard chain shot. You just click wherever and everything around you just kind of dies. Of course, very, very expensive build. So it's what you expect from a build like this. But yeah, I mean, it feels very, very good to play. Both on the high end and the low end. I do have a more budget PUB that I also played personally myself a few days ago with Zero to Hero. And it did perform very, very well as well. And I'll show gameplay of that build as well. So yeah, we'll just quickly like go to the boss, kill it, but yeah, as you can see, clear is very, very good. Damage is very, very good as well. So we'll just go in and kill the boss real quick. Oh, right, and this is also a reduced crit map. So we're doing like one third of our damage. Keep that in mind. See, so yeah, obviously it, was, it wasn't reduced crit, it would instantly die, but it still dies pretty fast anyway. So I'll do Uber Boss real quick. Only thing is with the Uber Boss, I swap in Hypothermia just because I want to reliably freeze the boss. It's very important. Or Heat Shiver. Yeah, this is a quick Uber Boss showcase. Just so you can see the DPS. As you can see, the DPS is still very, very good. So let's go over the build. Um, I guess I'll also show some budget as well. So this is the budget build. And if you're wondering, this build is like 200 divines. This is my zero to hero series. And I made a new shot character as well. This is a far shot build and not a point blank build. But yeah, this build is also very, very strong. I'll just go to the boss real quick as well. But yeah, this would also cleared very, very well. No mirror items, budget build made in less than 40 hours of play time. As you can see right here, it's 35 hours. And we'll go to the boss real quick just to show it. But yeah, Tornado Shot this patch is pretty good. Not as good as it was in Affliction, but still very, very good. I guess I have a lot of hinder buffs here, but you more or less get the point, right? The budget build is able to clear every tier 17, um, do any like tier 17 strat besides Titanic and all that. So let's go over Tornado Shot, why it's really good, this patch and all that. So the main reason why Tornado Shot is good is this right here, Forbidden Flesh, Oath of Spring. This essentially elevates Tornado Shot to the next level with how much damage you're getting from it. So if you're wondering what this does and how much damage it gives you, so it gives you a new Warden Ascendancy Note of the Spring, maximum effect of shock is 2%, and you can apply 50 shocks. Now, as you may know, Shadow Shot does shotgun, so when you fire eight projectiles and you have point blank range, practically all eight hit. So every single attack is essentially applying 16% shock. So it does not take that many attacks to apply 99% shock. Uh, it takes exactly like six attacks in this build. And as you can see, you attack six point, you know, seven times a second. So you apply 150 shock stacks in less than a second with this build. You might be wondering, okay, so how much damage is this? So as you can see from the Forbidden Flesh, this is roughly 56% more damage. And it's just two Forbidden Jewels. That is it. You know, this is the main reason why Chino Shot is actually pretty good at this patch. Two Forbidden Jewels is giving you 56% more damage. It is quite absurd. And this is a full cold convert tornado shot. So we are a hundred well, ninety-nine percent of cold converted. So physical damage to cold. And you might be wondering, okay, so how are you shocking? Well, apparently, an abyss jewel with added lightning damage with bow attacks, just one abyss jewel, is enough to shock any boss, even Ubers. So usually, you know, the problem with cold convert tornado shot, you don't get the shock, which is a damage loss. But now with this new Oath of Spring and just one Abyss Jewel, uh, you can essentially get 100% shock. So yeah, there's essentially pretty much like no opportunity cost for this much damage. It's just the two Forbidden Jewels and one Abyss Jewel, which you already have in your gloves. So yeah, it's a bunch of essentially free damage that you did not have before on a cold convert build. And we're also 99% Fizz Convert, 
because we want to take this new bleed crit wheel, which is very, very strong. So if you're wondering where I'm getting my cold convert, you get 35% from gloves, 25% from the mirror quiver, and then you get 39%, exactly 39% from the watcher's eye. So you have 99% of physical damage compared to cold damage. Then you have 1% physical damage. That's important because if you have 1% physical damage, you can still bleed. And you want to bleed because this crit wheel is very overpowered. This is all new this patch as well. And now we're also point blank. So you might be wondering, okay, why are you point blank then? You know, point blank tornado shot is not known for being very good. So there's a few reasons why you're point blank. I've done a lot of tests of myself, you know, but essentially point blank TS, if you stand right on top of the enemy, and I do me right on top and shoot like this, 100% of the projectiles will hit the enemy or like 95% to 100% projectiles, which is a massive DPS increase to the usual far shot TS. So in the past leagues, you know, you went far shot TS because it had like four or maybe five secondary projectiles. They nerfed it back in Acropolis League to where it is only three secondary projectiles now. So with three secondary projectiles, far shot TS just does not hit one target enough. Like if you do far shot TS, you probably hit with 60 to 70% of your projectiles, maybe up to 80% if the boss is very, very big, like that abomination boss. But something like the Sanctuary boss, you only hit us on like 60% of your projectiles. So far shot TS, you know, was the meta for a very long time, but not anymore because three secondary projectiles is just not enough to actually hit the target. But point blank TS, it doesn't really matter how many secondary projectiles you have because you're shooting right on top of the balls and every single projectile hits. And like I said, I test this myself personally. It is something like 95 to 100% of the projectiles hit. Every like three or four hits, it'll be like seven hits and not eight. Because I have seven, I have eight hours, for example. But yeah, it is... I want to say at least like 95% chance and 100% chance on like slightly bigger enemies. So this is why point blank TS is actually extremely strong now, where before in the past, you would pretty much never play point blank TS. On top of that, far shot was also nerfed this patch. So before far shot was 60% more damage. Now it's 30% more damage. So that was actually the same damage as point blank. So you're actually not losing damage by like choosing point blank over far shot in the first place. So yeah, those are some uh, mechanical things about TS, why we're playing point blank and all that. Next thing I want to go over is the heat shiver. So yeah, heat shiver is very strong for this build as well. Cold convert TS used you know, quite a bit in the past, but the big reason why it's very, very, very strong is that it also activates Trinity support. So Trinity support is not something you use in cold convert TS unless you have heat shiver. And as you may know, Trinity support is the highest damage support um, in the game for like generic Kelly builds, nothing even comes close to this. I'll show in the POB real quick. But yeah, as you can see, Trinity support is a 52% more damage multiplier. Our next best multiplier is like hypothermia at 29%, so quite a massive difference there. And also, Heat Shiver itself, as you can see here, is 60% more damage. So, not only did you get a 52% more damage multiplier in a gem, you also get 60% more damage on your helmet. So yeah, we're just gonna add a bunch of damage multipliers in this build, Heat Shiver, Oath of Spring, the Cold Convert, all that. Despite Hatred being nerfed, a lot of people think, okay, maybe Fizzbows aren't as good this league. The Hatred nerf doesn't really matter because it's more than made up by the new Fizzbows being extremely high in DPS. So last league, Fizzbows were like 1200 DPS on top end. Now the new Fizzbows are 1459 DPS. So the new, you know, changes to the data quality more than makes up for the Hatred nerf. And then, you know, Hatred is still good. You still get 40% of Fizz extra cold, which is um, quite a lot of DPS. It's, it still is a lot of DPS. And of course, the Hatred Watcher's Eye is always very, very strong. So yeah, that's pretty much like all the mechanics of this build, all the damage multipliers come together and why this build has such high DPS. So in my POB, I have 462 million DPS. Now I do want to say this has ramp time. This is why on the Uber XR showcase earlier, it didn't really look like 460 million DPS. That's because like I said, you do have ramp. You have power charges, frenzy charges, and of course your shock stacks and your rage. So on an Uber boss, you only stack in one frenzy, as you can see here, because you get it from Mana Forge Arrow. You only stack one frenzy every 0 0.45 seconds. And then it needs to crit and then also proc your power charge on crit to proc your four power charges. So, and then your rage is to build up, I believe like over like 10 seconds or whatever. So there is ramp, uh, which doesn't really matter while mapping. While mapping, you always have like full frenzies, full powers and rage. But 
it's not like uber exarch you obviously don't have that right to start but despite that despite having you know no ramp at the start of the boss it still is enough damage to kill before it faces but yeah, as you see if you take all this off you know your dps goes in half and this is like your dps to start an uber fight so also with the new change to, to a tornado shot you know from a uh, necropolis league it gets 40 percent increased projectile speed which is kind of nice because now you don't need to invest in projectile speed as much but you still want quite a bit personally i do have two streamlines i do feel like two streamlines felt the best you don't really want eye to eye although one eye to eye is okay but yeah this gives me 86 percent projectile speed with two streamlines and a quality on tornado shot it seems to be about enough as you can see here my tornado shot when i shoot it way over here on the screen it goes all the way to the end of my screen so yeah because usually you would you would get projectile speed from long shot but there's not much reason to take long shot when you're a point blank you don't really get that much damage from it uh, besides that the tree is pretty standard tornado shot build you know nothing really different here it's kind of the same tree as always there are some slight differences in how i put my character and all that um this is a multi mirror character but i will have the more budget pub link down below along with craft notes when i get to it and we also chose dead eye because two projectiles uh, obviously very strong tornado shot the plus one chain means you don't need any more investment in like chain for clear or whatever but with that said you can use awaken chain uh, awaken chain and spec into these chain nodes if you're doing like tier 16 very easy content it's very very strong for clearing really really good so do keep that in mind if you're doing like tier 16 content instead of this build feel free to use awaken chain instead and also depending on the content you do you can also unspec at a point blank point blank is only meant for these tier 17 bosses or uber bosses where you want to do as much dance as possible but it's not that good for clearing so if you're only focused on clearing like tier 16 then don't spec into point blank and you know just unspec out of it and like take like a uh cluster note or something yeah besides that i'll go to the gear real quick so it's a mirror bow mirror quiver the heat chipper of course a very very strong utmost not needed there is arturners as well two different mirror rings once again also not needed you can you play this build zero mirror rings right you don't need these implicits or you can play a one mirror ring and use conscious touch a uh, self-crafted chest uh boots and gloves with abyss sockets the abyss sockets are very important because that's why you're getting lightning damage to shock with other spring as i said earlier we are completely out of void um, not, not stun avoid, but you can get stun avoid if you want. If you spec into these notes and get some stun tattoos. Headhunter, of course. And that's pretty much about it for like the gear and the character. Go over quickly over the gems real quick. So gems, you have the Tanner Shot set up. We have the Sniper's Mark, Cast on Crit, Power Charge on Crit, Mana Forge Arrows, Tanner Frenzy set up. So how this works is that Frenzy will crit. And when Frenzy crits, it will proc your Cast on Crit, on Cast Sniper's Mark, and Tornado. Tornado is there because you're... Tornado shot can chain off the tornado and hit the boss, so it's a little bit extra DPS, and the tornado itself does some damage. Precision, blink arrow, blood rage, pretty standard, steel skin automation, and a frost blink. An aura setup is grace, awaken a lighten, hatred, and haste. You also don't need a lighten. I go over the notes on what you can do if you don't have awaken a lighten. You, like you said, you don't need a 10 mirror build to play tornado shot. I was playing on a 240 divine budget. It's very, very playable at a way lower budget. I'm probably going to be progressing this character over the next few days, see what else I can min-max. I've done a lot of PUB this character, but it feels very, very good. And I might say it might be the, the best bow character you can play this league. It is very, very strong because of the mechanics of Oath of Spring. Uh, you know, Fizz Convert Cold was very, very strong with Headhunter, as everyone might know. You get a lot as Fizz extra buffs with Headhunter, which means when you're playing any physical damage skill, you get a lot more damage than if you're playing something like a pure Ellie bow or a pure Ellie skill. So yeah. That's about it. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. But I'm having a lot of fun with this build. It's very, very strong. And it's also not even that squishy. It is a bow build. Keep that in mind. A bow builds aren't going to be that tanky. But we still have a respectable max hit. I'll take off my seal skin. But we see, yeah, we still have at least 10k, almost 11k fizz max hit, 49k LE, and 65k fire. Um, the reason why I went with this setup in the first place is because I have decent tankiness. You know, 5.4k HP. 82 or 83 max res, uh, 88 fire max res to the dying sun, and some like physical damage converted to elemental damage on my chest here as well. Uh, so, yeah, it's not a squishy bow build, but keep in mind you are a bow build and you're always going to be squishy relative to other builds, but you make up for the fact that you're squishy because you kill a lot of things off screen. If you played a bow build before, you know how these builds feel. But this bow build is a lot more tanky than probably a lot of bow builds you played in the past year. Namely because of the stuff I'm doing for this build, the new life rolls help a lot. 5.4k HP does in fact also keep you alive. But yeah, that's about it.